Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're going to take a look at the beautiful new add-on, which I think a lot of you guys would like to work with, especially if you're into modeling and you like to have full control over your subdivision and how your subdivision actually looks. And this is from Ramen Empire. It is called the RM Subdivision Surface. It's free and then you can use it to do some impressive subdivision stuff. And it is probably close to what you have with your traditional subdivision tools. It's just a little bit different. So by default, once you go over to the page, it is written in some interesting i think japanese language but then you can actually if you're using things like you know chrome or edge browser you can translate this to english and it's super cool so to download this is very simple go over here and hit the download button links to this is going to be in the description and how you work with this is very simple all you need to do is go over to edit go over to preference then you go over to the file part and you add this within the file part that is how easy it is and this is definitely going to be showing up somewhere within your asset browser so if you click all the way down you notice this is within your asset browser. And if you're using Blender 4.1 and above, you would notice that whatever you have within your asset browser definitely comes around here. So you find that here as well. So how you get to work with this is very simple. So by default, when you want to add a subdivision, all you need to do is have the object selected, hold down control, tap one on the keyboard, or maybe tap two, tap three, tap four, you know, and you can go ahead and add whatever subdivision level you want. And by default, this is really cool. But one thing which you notice is once we add our subdivision, we've sort of lost the volume. And this is what the RM subdivision surface tool is looking at fixing. So if I have this selected, let's actually go ahead and select these and pin that there. So this is going to be for the default one. And we're just simply going to go ahead and go over to the properties and we're also going to make some pin in here. So I'll also go in here, make sure I have that pinned, click on the drop down and add the RM to this one. So with this one, you'd notice that we retain the volume. So you probably say, oh, this is set to five. Okay. So let's set this to five so you can see, and you notice we still have that volume and with a tool like this, it is very easy to still retain the volume and at the same time subdivide the mesh. So instead of losing the volume and having a much more smaller mesh, you can subdivide and still keep it that way. But of course, if you like to control the volume, you can. So you can use this to control the volume. And this is also pretty beautiful. So let's just go ahead and hide this and also hide this at one. And we're also gonna grab Suzanne. So what we're going to do is add a subdivision surface of four, for example. And so we have that there and I'm just gonna pin that so we can see that. And I'm gonna have this selected, click right there, go over and add this. And of course we can increase this as well and get that working as we want. You would notice we're keeping the volumes. And at the same time, we are also keeping some extra details. So you can see we have those details here. We sort of lose them. They're sort of subtle here, but you know, we don't see them. You'd also notice right about here, we also have a couple of um, sharp details that we also have in there. And like I mentioned earlier with this, you can, you know, type this down if you want and control it all the way up. So it's very interesting to see that there's a tool like this that currently exists and you can definitely use this to do some very cool stuff. Now with this new example, let's talk about something that I believe a lot of you guys would want to see. Not all models actually reduce their volume when you add subdivision surface to them. And this is because of how they are built. And in this case, we do have a skull which you can definitely get from the asset library. So I'm just going to add a subdivision of three and if we click all the way down you'd notice that we have creases turned on now with this crease turned on let's actually go ahead and turn off the wireframe so with the crease turned on we can increase the quality of the crease and we can also drop this down as well once we turn off this crease you notice it becomes smoother and we can turn this on to actually get that hard crease around the model now the same thing can also be done with this as well. So if we go ahead and add the RM subdivision surface, by default, this is what you get. But then once you start increasing the crease, you would notice that you've got this nice stuff that you can gradually just play with. And it's pretty interesting how this works, all right? And another cool thing here is this is extremely procedural and at the same time you can see the wireframe on the fly so you can actually add direct your stuff you can dictate what is going on real time not saying that you cannot do this with the default one but this just looks a bit more cleaner and easier to work with than simply diving into the advanced and fiddling with all of that stuff so for those who are looking at playing with these or maybe you like to work with the subdivision surface which by default once you have this selected and you turn off the crease, let's actually turn the wireframe off now. Once you turn off the crease, you notice that becomes extremely smooth. So you don't necessarily have too much control over that. Of course, you can control this all the way down to a point like so, and then turn this off. But with this other one, you can 
actually just dial this down, dial that back up, and you can have that smooth transition with the whole thing, and you still retain the volume, which again is super, super useful. With this, of course, you have to go ahead and check that button off, and I kind of think that this looks way more cleaner to work with, and of course, it also has a bit more of a managed thing where you can bake two parts and also you know play with some of these parameters and get the most out of it and for those thinking about modeling with this this holds up pretty nicely so for example let's say we make a simple insert and we go ahead to extrude this if we choose to add this modifier now you can see that it holds up as well so we can also go ahead and insert that much and we can also just simply extrude that all the way down maybe insert some more and we can at the same time just go in and make some selections like so let's double tap i on the keyboard to make some individual inserts like so and we have that going so with something like this you can also go in and make some adjustments so you can choose to tighten that soften that play with the volume you know depending on what you like to achieve this just simply helps you get on with it and like we mentioned earlier if you're thinking about creasing certain parts you can of course go ahead and crease those parts and get some nicer looking detail for the subdivision level you can always drop that down if you want so you can also you know choose to play with the smoothing depending on what you want you do notice that you have like real-time feedback on your viewport which is super lovely. So this is it. For those who are thinking about picking this up, you like to work with it, then you can simply go over to the link in the description and grab this for yourself. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.